Hello, I'm Arch, and in this video, we'll be showing you how you can file a UK tax return, specifically declaring non-residents and declaring that you've left the UK through a split year tax return. And we'll go into a bit around what that means. Now, if you just want to watch the video around how the products, how the software works, you can skip ahead. But before that, let's provide some context into what split year is and the scenario that we will be filing for. So, we will be UK citizen. We will be someone that has a UK passport. Now, that means that we always get the UK tax-free personal allowance. No matter where we move, we have £12,570 that we can earn tax-free. Obviously, that amount will change if the personal allowance changes. We're looking at filing for the April 23 to April 24 tax year. So... We, in this case, have left the UK in January 24 and we've moved to Spain and started to work there full time. And that's important as this impacts the date that we can split the tax year and split our tax residency. And we were employed in the UK from April 23 until Jan 24, until we left. Um, so we received a P45. That often means that we can also, that we are also due a rebate because our personal allowance may not have been fully used up because we weren't here for the full tax year. And like many of these cases, individuals and families alike, we've started to let out our family home that was in the UK from when we left, becoming a landlord in the process. Cool, so that's the scenario that we're going to be looking at. Obviously, your case is going to be different. It might be similar. Feel free to move around the dates, the countries, etc. And you should get something similar to the case that we will be filing for. Now... Before we jump into the software, again, just to show you how split year treatment works. Now, we are, have been UK tax resident. So at April 23 at the start of the tax year, we are UK tax resident. Now, we left the UK in Jan 24. So what split year allows us to do is from April 23, all of these months until Jan 24, we're classified as UK tax resident. And that means that we're taxed on our worldwide income. That means any income that we have from the UK, from abroad, whatever that is, the HMRC want to know about it, and it should be declared on the UK tax return. And then from Jan 24 onwards, from once we've moved to Spain, we're only going to be taxed on UK sourced income. Now, UK sourced income is things like UK rental property, UK work days, and stuff like that. Now, some of the qualifications of split year treatment is that you are moving either... Um, because you cease to have a home in the UK, if you or your partner have started to work full-time overseas. And one of the other qualifications is that you must be non-resident for the following year. So in my April 24 to 25 tax year that we can't see on this screen, I must be non-resident for that year too. Now, a final thing is I must be UK tax resident or I must qualify as per the statutory residence test to be UK resident to then be able to claim split year treatment. If I'm not a UK resident, I don't need to claim split year treatment because I've left early enough in the year that UK residency doesn't apply to me. If that sounds good, we'll jump into the software, we'll jump into tax and we'll showcase how it works. Awesome. So now we are on the taxed website, taxd.co.uk. And at this point, we can click start for free. Now, this will kick off the actual tax return process. And the first couple minutes, the first 10 or so questions are all about building your personalized experience, your personal tax return. So we'll select personal tax. And what we're doing is ensuring that you only see the questions that relate to your specific case. And these are one of the first important ones. Have any of these rare cases applied to you? Now, in our case, because we've left the country, we want to select resident of another country. <clears throat> now, depending on your personal situation, you may need to select other things. So this walkthrough um, can be used, but remember to use your own situation when it comes to tax filing. Job status in 2023-24. Now, in our situation, we were employed. And we became a landlord once we left the UK. So we'll select employed and landlord. Then additional sources of income. Interest and dividends are quite popular. In our case, some rental income, which is just the same as landlord, but I guess different ways of saying it. And then any assets that we sold. In our case, no assets sold. And then where we heard about tax. Now, so at this point, we can create our tax account. We can either sign up with Google or using our name, email and password, create an account and tax. Now I'll pause it here and then we'll jump back in just after the sign up process in a second or two. 
Awesome, so that's our account created and now we are on the main tax return. And as you can see on the left hand side, we've got all the categories. This just helps us navigate between the different categories and income sources on tax. But then also just to let you know, we have the chat at the bottom right of the page. This is where you can get in, get in contact with one of our team, ask for support if required, speak to a human um, as you go through the process. But let's get started. So if I hit continue, we then move into the next category for residents. And then we can see here, this is the SA109 page. So the place where we declare that we've left the UK. Now we use the statutory residence test. Now this is what HMRC used to determine where you are tax resident. Now it works almost like a flowchart and the aim is to kick you out of the flowchart. If you are automatically non-resident, then you're kicked out of the flowchart, you're automatically non-resident. In our particular case for the individual that we are filing for, we have spent over 183 days in the UK, so we are automatically UK tax resident. Now, we were UK tax resident for the previous three years, and in terms of our ties to the UK, all of these actually apply because, in our case, we were in the UK for the majority of the year, along with our family, and we were working in the UK. Now, our days in the UK, this is going to be a rough estimate, but 260 days and 230 days, obviously in your case, ensure that these are the accurate amounts. A day in the UK is where you spend midnight in the UK physically, where you physically are in the UK at midnight, and work days are where you spend over three hours of the day working in the UK on, on UK soil. Now, if we hit update, text, what it does, it tells us based on the SRT, based on the residence tests, are we UK tax resident or not? In this case, we are. So we just need to provide details around nationality. And yes, we were a UK tax resident in the previous tax year. And this is where we can start our split year tax claim. Now, because we are UK tax resident, which is the first qualifying factor, we then want to say, yes, we were tax resident also in Spain, in our case. And we were not tax resident there last year. Now, we want to claim split year leaving. So split year leaving means we've left the UK, we're moving out, and we started to work full-time overseas, and we ceased to have a home in the UK too. I'll hit update, and our departure date can either be the first work date of overseas employment, or if we ceased to have a home in the UK, it would be that date as well. So because we started to let out the property, we, we ceased to have a home in the UK, even though the home might be owned by us. Now, always choose the earliest date. That's what HMRC would recommend. So we'll choose 1st of January 24, nice and easy. Now, we need to know how many days were spent in the UK between the 1st of Jan, so when we become non-resident, until the end of that tax year. In our case, we never returned to the UK, so it would just be zero. Now, there is some logic that goes on behind the scenes here. Based on the ties, we pro rata how many days you can spend in the UK while still claiming split year treatment. Now, if you spend too many days in the UK in your non-resident portion, then technically you would be UK resident for the whole year. You'd wanna avoid that, but obviously this is retrospective, so input the amount that relates to your particular case. Would you like to claim remittance basis? Now, this is applicable to individuals that are not domiciled in the UK, but whilst were, but during the UK resident portion, may have had some foreign income that was kept abroad. For most UK citizens, this may not be applicable, but for individuals that have come to the UK, this might be this might be applicable to them. Let's hit no to this now. And then we've got some automatically generated text here. You can add in more details to provide context to HMRC, if required, but all good, depending on what's on there. Then we've got a summary based on our split year claim. Now this basically is, is explaining to us exactly what I showed in the photo earlier. There's two parts to the year, the UK resident part from April till Jan 24, April 23 till Jan 24, and then from Jan 24 onwards, we are non-resident, so only taxed on UK sourced income, which will be our rental income. Awesome. So let's move on to the next category. This is SA102 or employment. I'll add taxed, hit next, and then we'll ask about the employment industry. Now this determines whether there are any fixed deductions for expenses that we can claim for your particular industry. Were you a director of tax? I'm gonna hit no to this, um, and then I'm gonna put ended work during the year. So let's say that we ended work on 31, 12, 2023. 
Um, there we go. And then we've got the P45. So this would have been sent from your employer. In our case, let's put in some sample amounts, which seem about right. So around 45K and 10K tax paid. You will have a PAYE office number and reference number on the P45. It's optional, but if you have it with you, it's worth including it where possible. Did you work in the UK for all the days you earned this income? Now, in our case, yes, because we stopped the employment before we became a non-resident. Now, in some cases, you may have continued your UK employment after you have left and become a non-UK tax resident. In these cases, you may need to select no and then input the percentage of income that was earned whilst you were actually living and were UK tax resident. But for most individuals, you may have had a split here. So this would all be UK income and then you would have, a, have an overseas employer. But there are cases where your employment contract with the UK company will continue even though you're living abroad. That explains this question. Did we receive any benefits? I'm gonna answer no to this. That includes things that are on the P11D, like medical insurance, company cars, etc. And there's just a few more questions around employment expenses, but I'll skip past those and we'll move on to the credits and deductions category. Cool, so now we're on credits and deductions. At this point, these are quite rare cases where pension contributions, venture capital schemes, and so on. I'm gonna select that none of these apply to me this year. And that's fine. And then let's move on to rental, the SA 105 section of the tax return. I'm going to select residential property. And we need to give this property a name. So I'm going to call it residential. And I'm going to select that the property was not jointly owned. But obviously, if it was in your case, you can select yes. And in many cases, income tax automatically is withheld if you are a non-resident landlord. So if your letting agent knows that you're living abroad, then technically they should be deducting tax from the rent and paying that to HMRC at 20% of the rent. You then claim it back through the tax return, but in this case, I'll just answer no for simplicity. And we'll put 3,000 rental income for January, February, March. And any expenses for this? I'm gonna select yes to show how the expenses work. So we've got things like mortgage interest and we automatically apply the 20% tax credit. Um, and for mortgage arrangement fees because these come under finance costs. Other expenses that you can see here are all common landlord expenses that we see and all of these generally can be expensed. In theory, anything that you purchase wholly and exclusively for the running of your rental business can be expensed. Now, in this particular case, I'm just gonna put some mortgage interest and let's add on some landlord insurance that we had to purchase before we moved. Perfect. Did you drive to and from the property? I'm going to select no to this because we left the UK. And did we use the property for ourselves during the year? The answer is yes, but this question is in particular looking at since we started to let the property out and since tenancies began. So I'm going to select no because of that. And then the next section just looks at do we have any losses or unused finance costs? Because this is our first year letting out the property, it will be no but potentially in future years, especially as first year landlords often incur a loss because there are some setup costs that might go with finding tenants, cleaning the property, etc. Are we expecting property income next year? Yes. And then there we go. That's the uh, rental property section complete. We can hit continue and we'll move on to general. Now in this section, there's just a few extra questions that we need for completeness, such as payments on account if you filed tax returns previously or if you've had any rebates from the employment already through a P800 notice, this would be unlikely if you've left the UK, student loans, and then have you got any other income that we've not included, or if you would like to provide HMRC with any additional attachments. Now attachments aren't required, like you don't need to submit expenses or receipts, but this could be things like help sheets or certificates of residency if applicable. Awesome. Now the final section is one that I completed before. This is the personal info section. I completed this beforehand um, just because it's nice and easy anyway. Um, it's gonna be things like your name, your date of birth, your address, and then your UTR number and national insurance number. For now, I'll just use a dummy UTR, but please input your actual details on here. And then we can hit continue and we'll move on to the final section of the tax return. So in this case, 
we are due a refund of 3.3K. Now, use your actual bank details. I've put in an example here. Now, HMRC will pay out the refund in, straight into this account. If you don't have a UK bank account anymore, or if you don't have one at all, HMRC can send you a check to the location and address that they have on file for you. Referral code, and then we've got the tax payment. So we'll process this now. Awesome, so that's the tax return paid for. And then now we can see the full tax calculation that leads us to our refund of that 3.3K. We can hover over it to get a bit more detail onto what each part of the tax calculation represents and means. And if we're happy with it, we can hit next. See if there's any other information that we want to provide to HMRC on the tax return. In this case, nothing more to add. And then we also need to verify our identity. We do that using a third party provider Stripe. Can be done on your phone, just need to scan the QR code and it takes a couple minutes. Once that's all done, we just need to see, right, have we submitted this tax return before? If you are submitting an amended return, then hit yes. If this is your first time, please select no. Double check the UTR, all good. And then we can generate a preview for this assessment. So let's hit generate preview. Awesome, so now we can view the full tax return. We can see what it would look like if it was on the HMRC pages itself. Let's just skip down to the SA109 section here. So you can see how we've prepared it based on the answers provided. And if you're happy with it, just hit update, then we're all good. And when you're ready, you can hit submit to HMRC. So let's hit submit. And then essentially what we're doing now is we are sending this tax return in a digital format to HMRC systems. There's nothing for you to print out. And within a couple, within a couple of seconds, it's all done. The tax return is filed. We can just hit next and we can go to the tax dashboard. And then you can see here, this is the new tax return that we've just filed right now. Um, along with the tax calculation, the SA302. So I can download these files and I can view it, keep it for my own records. Perfect, so that is the tax return filing for a split year outbound, someone leaving the UK. And hopefully that makes sense in terms of how the tax return filing goes. And actually, if you have all your information at like the P45, the rental income and expenses, it doesn't take too long to complete. As always as well, we and our team are on the chat to support if you have any questions, or you can book a call with one of our advisors to go through it in detail too. Thanks for watching. See you later.